Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and in today's video I'm going to show you how to fly a non-precision approach in the aircraft and avionic updated Boeing 787 and Boeing 747. It basically works the same in both aircraft, for that reason I am summarizing the two in one video. We are currently on a right hand downwind for Romeo 1 to right at Cancun Airport in Mexico. And today we have planned the ANAF approach. We can see the airport over there and we can see the approach chart straight over here, kindly sponsored by Navigraph. So, RMP approach Romeo 1 to right at Cancun Airport and let's have a look into some of the most important things over here. There are two ways how we can fly an approach like this. One of them is using LNAF and VNAF, the other is using IAN. So the difference between those two I'll line out in a few moments. But first of all we gotta check that the approach is indeed correct in our box. That is always the first thing to do for an LNAF approach. And indeed for any non-precision approach that's going to be flown with FMS guidance. So after Atmos we proceed to waypoint 506, mandatory 2000 feet, so all of them are mandatory at 2000. And then we proceed to waypoint 540, which is the intermediate fix at 2000. And then we can start our descent towards waypoint 545, which is mandatory at 1300. And thereafter we've got a 3 degree glide that matches the FMC down to waypoint 542, which is the missed approach point. So be aware we do not have a runway waypoint in here. Minimums for this approach, which is LNAV only, is 460 feet. And be aware, LNAV only does not mean you cannot use VNAV, but instead it only means that your approach is not based on a CDFA flight technique. So you can simply use your airplane systems as usual, and all that is going to be different is that you will um, is that you have a higher minima. That's the easy way of saying this. Okay, so. 2000 feet is set, VNAV is armed, I am however going to go speed intervent, keep the speed down to the up speed, and that's going to be that. Okay, so that is our approach procedure understood, finally for the missed approach, turn right, continue the missed approach to holding pattern at fields at 3000, and if we look into the FMC, then we can see we've got fields 3000 with the holding pattern in there. Okay, so that is basically our approach preparation. Now there are two ways how to fly a non-precision approach in the Boeing 747-8 and the Boeing 787. One of them is by flying it as a LNAV and VNAV approach, the other is flying it using the integrated approach navigation mode. Now IAN is available by pressing the approach button once you're inbound to the final approach fix and I am going to demonstrate that in a second attempt. For the first one we're going to use LNAV and VNAV which are engaged already and we can see we've got speed, LNAV and VNAV path mode. Now a quick help to understand you the guidance that we are going to get from the aircraft. Basically it's going to be VNAV all the way down, then in VNAV we're going to maintain the 2000 feet over here and then VNAV is eventually going to bring us onto that 3 degree final descent. However. Even though we are going to fly this as an approach using LNAV and VNAV, we still have to cross-check our distance versus altitude. And we have to do that manually using the chart. And you can see that on the chart over here we got a recommended altitude table, which is based on the runway threshold. So 3 miles out, 1030, 2 miles out, 710. And you can see that we've got the distance to the runway threshold showing right on the primary flight display just over here. So out of runway 1-2 and indeed I have to correct myself, it is showing us the distance to the missed approach point. So towards uh, 542, while the chart shows us the distance to the threshold. The good news however is that they are almost at the same point, so if we go to the plan mode we can have a look at that. So plan, legs page. And then if you go ahead you can see that basically the um, 542 waypoint is almost exactly about 0.3 nautical miles from the runway threshold. Alright then, let's also understand the symbology we will have on our heads up display because that is going to be very handy. We have our 3 degree line right up here which is the dashed line. Since the approach is a 3 degree approach, we can easily fly it or we can easily cross check that we are actually on the correct vertical path. 
simply by looking if the 3 degree line is located exactly on the runway threshold or on the aiming point. Now, the way we are going to fly the approach using Elnaf and VNAV is that we are going to follow the um, barometric minimum there of 460 feet. Also, somebody tell me why my airplane didn't start the descent as it should. Well, doesn't matter. Let's force it manually. Alternate event, down we go. Now that is Airbus logic, the Boeing should not do that. But in any case, let's uh, make that a bit nicer, go flat out of change. So, once we're established on the approach, we can simply use our HUD symbology. We've got our flight path symbol over here, and then we've got our three degree line over here. When we are approaching the minimum and disconnecting the autopilot, on many non-precision approaches, you might not be aligned exactly with the wrong way. Now, in real life, that works really, really well. In the simulator, it doesn't always work that well. So, here's how you can use the HUD. Manually fly the airplane so that you are aligned with the runway track and that the flight path symbol is directly on your runway threshold. Then make sure that the 3 degree line is also on your runway threshold and then you're basically on a perfect 3 degree approach, making your life very, very easy. Okay, we are now about 18 nautical miles from the runway and we are about to reach our 2000 feet. Once we're down, I am going to start our speed reduction slowly, even though we have quite a long level segment ahead, so we can take a lot of time for our speed reduction. Final little word on the airplane, as some of you are going to say, hey, why don't you have TPR showing on the engines? I am recording this one with the Kuro 787-8 mod, so this is actually a GE-powered 787-8, and not the standard-10 that you are used to, from your experience with the Premium Deluxe update. Very recommendable mod, you'll find a link in the video description below. Okay then, for us though, back into the flight deck and back into flying this. We're now 15 miles out from the runway and we can see that on the primary flight display in the hut we are also seeing 15 miles, so this is actually quite accurate. Let's start slowing the airplane down, flaps one. And it is worth mentioning that you do not need to um, have the airplane at your final approach speed by the FAF for non-precision approaches. That is a common mistake that many flight simmers do. There is no reason whatsoever to believe that. And let's go flap 5. So the only case in which you would actually decelerate the airplane all the way to the final approach speed prior to starting the final descent is if you are going to fly the approach in selected mode. So if you were to use the vertical speed or flight path angle function, then you would bring the airplane to your final approach speed by the time you reach the FAF so that you don't have any speed changes and therefore you don't have any required vertical speed changes. But that is the only situation really, apart from that. You can fly this as a normal decelerated approach. I'm sorry, by the way, I'm speaking Airbus terms here, but it's basically it's the same in the Boeing. We used to call it a low drag approach in the Boeing, and really either way is going to work. Okay then, speed is down to about the flap 5 speed. That's now I'm going to intercept the final descent, and once we're establishing ourselves, I'm going to go gear down flap 15 and configure the airplane and so on. So, oh, if you're wondering why I'm just looking outside to the hut, you've got the vertical deviation bar over here, which is really all that we need for this approach. Now, I'm wondering, there is a bucket present that when you approach the Venus profile, the airplane might not start its descent as it should. So, for that reason, we have to press Alt and Event, and then it usually works. So, let's see how that is going to perform. We are in 2,000 feet, it's a 3 degree slope, so by the time we are about 6 nautical miles out, I do expect to intercept the VNAV path, so at about 7 miles I would expect this to become alive. Okay, here we go, intercepting the path, then let's go gear down, flap 15. FMC message, drag required, yep, you've just got the landing gear, my friend. 
No need to complain anymore. Thank you. Okay, flaps 20 and flaps 30. Here we go, VRF plus 5 is set. Okay, and like that, we are basically established now. And VNAV is going to fly us down. So as per the chart, we have to cross waypoint 545 at an altitude of 1300 feet. That's going to be our final approach fix, as you can see on the chart over here. Mandatory, and thereafter we're going to follow the 3 degree descent. And we can use the dis altitude distance tables to cross-check our height, which we have to do. But since we are equipped with a hot airplane, we can also simply cross-check it by looking outside. Okay then, approach and descend, 500 feet set, Venus path, speed and event. You can basically see that the 3 degree line is nicely lining up with the runway threshold right now. So once we pass the waypoint 545, we're going to go into that 3 degree descent, and then we are going to be established. Three, two, one, and descent, please. And here we go. Okay, perfect. So, three miles out, we have to be in a thousand and thirty. And you can see three miles out, a little bit high there on the profile. And you can see that by looking out the hut as well. But the three degree line more or less lines up with the um, aiming point. So that is all we're looking for. Okay, let's set our missed approach altitude. 3,000 feet. Here we go. 3,000 set. And you can see LNAV and VNAV are flying us down just perfectly. So this is how you would fly pretty much any non-precision approach where the airplane would, um, where you would not have a straight in path. If you have a very long straight in final, then you can use IAN mode as well. And I would say we wind back now to have a look into how the approach would be flown using IAN integration. But I know you guys love to see my landing, so for that reason. Come on. Here we go. For that reason, let's do a landing first. And then we beam back and do the same thing again using IAN mode. Once again, very easy. Just keep your flight path vector aimed right at the aiming point. And we are down. Okay, speed break up, thrust is normal, and welcome to Cancun. Right, now let's go back and have a look into how this looks like with the integrated approach navigation. All right, we are joining the final approach once again overhead the intermediate fix. And we are now going to do the IAN version of the approach. So, what exactly is IAN then? IAN basically is a design from Boeing that's meant to make ILS, so precision approaches and non-precision approaches, flyable the same way. And how that works, I'm going to show you now. So basically, we have to wait until we are more or less overhead the final approach fix in the version how it is simulated here. In the real aircraft, you could arm IAN at any time. But here we are inbound to the final approach fix. We can press approach mode. Now you can see our FMA has changed to final approach course. And we can see that glide path, note the difference, GP versus GS is armed. So glide path is armed and final approach course is intercepted. What final approach course does is the FMC basically calculates for you an extended runway center line. And the IAN mode simply goes to track that. Quite similar to a localizer for a conventional ILS approach. 
What is important to understand over here is when you can use IAN and when you cannot. So you can use IAN when you have a straight in approach like we have it right here. You cannot use IAN if you have any turns close to the runway because IAN is always going to intercept the extended runway center line. That's why it's called final approach course on the FMA over here. So we've just about gotten a new indication on our PFD, which is that white little arrow over there. And that is our glide path. It is going to work similar to a glide slope on an ILS, but based on the FMC data. So you will see that come alive in a few moments as we approach our final approach fakes of upper November 545. And as soon as we're intercepting that, the airplane is going to follow this just like an ILS. So you don't need to adjust your MCP altitudes. Making the approach, well, exactly the same in order how to execute it as an ILS approach. And that is the big positive here for IAN approaches. They work the same as ILS approaches in terms of the procedures how to fly them. Okay then, let's slow our airplane down to final approach speed. Look, you can see now we've got glide path capture. So we can set our missed approach altitude of 3000 feet. And you can see our IAN data here on the heads up display. And obviously we got it down here on the PFD as well. So that is how the IAN approach works. And now you fly it down exactly the same way as an ILS approach. Just that it is not flown with guidance from the ground-based navigation aids like an ILS, but from the airplane's FMC. Okay then, fully established. You can see it's doing a good job getting us down. We're at 2 DME right now. The check altitude over here, according to the chart, would be 710. So you can see we're a little bit high there, but looking outside, we're actually hitting that runway perfectly. You can see how the three degree line is aligned just prior to the aiming point and just to beam the puppy. So that is really exactly what we're, what we're looking for. Okay, continue. Disconnecting the autopilot, let's hand, let's, uh, hand fly the plane on the rest of the way down and that is going to conclude today's tutorial thank you very much for watching i hope that i enhanced your understanding of the different modes you have available for non-precision approaches and i hope that you are now going to head out and do your own well your own exercises really okay then Touchdown. And that's going to be it. Thank you for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, do let me know in the comments. As always, like, comment, and subscribe, as it does really help out the channel. And if you really love what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below, or to see you as a channel member, which is going to give you exclusive access to new videos before they're released for everyone else. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I see you all on the next one.